Hey everybody, this is The Lightning Thief by Rick Reardon, Chapter 21, Part 2. That's what he intends, Father. That's what he said. Poseidon was silent for a long time. Lord Zeus has closed the discussion on this matter. He will not allow talk of Kronos. You have completed your quest, child. That is all you need to do. But I stopped myself. Arguing would do no good. It would very possibly anger the only God who I had on my side. As, as you wish, Father. A faint smile played on his lips. Obedience does not come natural to you, naturally to you, does it? No, sir. I must take some blame for that, I suppose. The sea does not like to be restrained. He rose to his full height and took up his trident. Then he shimmered and became the size of a regular man, standing directly in front of me. You must go, child, but first know that your mother has returned. I stared at him completely stunned. My mother? You will find her at home. Hades sent her when you recovered his helm. Even the Lord of Death pays his debts. My heart was pounding. I couldn't believe it. Do you? Would you? I wanted to ask Poseidon if Poseidon would come with me to see her, but then I realized that was ridiculous. I imagined loading up the god of the sea into a taxi and taking him to the Upper East Side. If he'd wanted to see my mom all these years, he would have. And there was Smelly Gabe to think about. Poseidon's eyes took on a little sadness. When you return home, Percy, you must make an important choice. You'll find a package waiting in your room. A package? You will understand when you see it. No one can choose your path, Percy. You must decide. I nodded, though I didn't know what he meant. Your mother is a queen among women, Poseidon said wistfully. Had I, I had not met such a mortal woman in, thou, in a thousand years. Still, I am sorry you were born, child. I have brought you a hero's fate, and a hero's fate is never happy. It is never anything but tragic. I tried not to feel hurt. Here was my own dad telling me he was sorry I'd been born. I don't mind, father. Not yet, perhaps, he said, not yet. But it was an unforgivable mistake on my part. I'll leave you then, I bowed awkwardly. I, I won't bother you again. I was five steps to say away when he called Perseus. I turned. There was a different light in his eyes, a fiery kind of pride. You did well, Perseus. Do not misunderstand me. Whatever else you do, know that you are mine. You are a true son of the sea god. As I walked back through the city of the gods, conversation stopped. The muses paused their concert. People and satyrs and naiads all turned toward me, their faces filled with respect and gratitude. As I, and as I passed, they knelt as if I were some kind of hero. Fifteen minutes later, still in a trance, I was back on the streets of Manhattan. I caught a taxi to my mom's apartment, rang the doorbell, and there she was, my beautiful mother, smelling of peppermint and licorice, the weariness and worry evaporating from her face as soon as she saw me. Percy! Oh, thank goodness, my baby! She crushed the air right out of me. We stood in the hallway as she cried and ran her hands through my hair. I'll admit it, my eyes were a little misty too. I was shaking. I was so relieved to see her. She told me she'd just appeared at the apartment that morning, scaring Gabe half out of his wits. She didn't remember anything since the Minotaur and couldn't believe it when Gabe told her I was a wanted criminal traveling across the country, blowing up national monuments. She'd been going out of her mind with worry all day because she hadn't heard the news. Gabe had forced her to go into work, saying she had a month's salary to make up when she better get started. I swallowed back my anger and told her my own story. I tried to make it sound less scary than it had been, but it wasn't easy. I was just getting to the fight with Ari's when Gabe's voice interrupted from the living room. Hey, Sally, that me love done yet or what? She closed her eyes. He isn't going to be happy to see you, Percy. 
The store got a half a million phone calls today from Los Angeles. Something about free appliances. Oh yeah, about that. She managed a weak smile. Just don't make him angrier, all right? Come on. In the month I'd been gone, the apartment had turned into Gabe land. Garbage was ankle deep on the carpet. The sofa had been reupholstered in beer cans. Dirty socks and underwear hung off the lampshades. Gabe and three of his big goony friends were playing poker at the table. When Gabe saw me, his cigar dropped out of his mouth. His face got redder than lava. You got nerve coming here, you little punk. I thought the police... He's not a fugitive after all, my mom interjected. Isn't that wonderful, Gabe? Gabe looked back and forth between us. He didn't seem to think my homecoming was so wonderful. Bad enough I had to give back your life insurance money, Sally, he growled. Give me the phone. I'll call the cops. Gabe, no. He raised his eyebrows. Did you just say no? You think I'm going to put up with this punk again? I can still press charges against him for ruining my Camaro. But he raised his hand and my mother flinched. For the first time I realized something, Gabe had hit my mother. I didn't know when or how much, but I was sure he'd done it. Maybe it had been going on for years when I wasn't around. A balloon of anger started expanding in my chest. I came toward Gabe, instinctively taking a, the, my pen out of my pocket. He just laughed. What, punk? You gonna ride on me? You touch me and you are going to jail forever. You understand? Hey, Gabe, his friend Eddie interrupted. He's just a kid. Gabe looked at him res resentfully and mimicked his falsetto voice. Just a kid. His other friends laughed like idiots. I'll be nice to you, punk. Gabe showed me his tobacco-stained teeth. I'll give you five minutes to get your stuff and clear out. After that, I call the police. Gabe, my mother pleaded. He ran away, Gabe told her. Let him stay gone. I was itching to uncap Riptide, but even if I did, the blade wouldn't hurt humans. And Gabe, by the loosest definition, was human. My mother took my arm. Please, Percy, we'll go to your room. I let her pull me away, my hands still trembling with rage. My room had been completely filled with Gabe's junk. There were stacks of used car batteries, a rotting bouquet of sympathy flowers with a card from somebody who'd seen uh, his Barbara Walters interview. Gabe is just upset, honey, my mother told me. I'll talk to him later. I'm sure it will work out. Mom, it'll never work out. Not as long as Gabe's here. She wrung her hands nervously. I can, I'll take you to work with me for the rest of the summer. In the fall, maybe there's another boarding school. Mom, she lowered her eyes. I'm trying, Percy. I just, I need some time. A package appeared on my bed. At least I could have sworn it hadn't been there a moment before. It was a battered cardboard box about the right size to fit a basketball. The address on the mailing slip was in my own handwriting. The Gods, Mount Olympus, 600th floor, Empire State Building, New York, New York. With best wishes, Percy Jackson. Over the top in the black marker in a man's clear, bold print was the address of our apartment and the words, return to sender. I suddenly understood what Poseidon had told me on Olympus, a package, a decision. Whatever else you do, know that you are mine. You are a true son of the sea god. I looked at my mother. Mom, do you want Gabe gone? Percy, it isn't that simple. Mom, just tell me. The jerk has been hitting you. Do you want him gone or not? She hesitated, then nodded almost imperceptibly. Yes, Percy, I do and I'm trying to get up my courage to tell him, but you can't do this for me. You can't solve my problems. I looked at the box. I could solve her problem. I wanted to slice that package open, plop it on the poker table, and take out what was inside. I could start my very own statue garden right there in the living room. That's what a Greek hero would do in the stories, I thought. That's what Gabe deserves. 
But a hero's story always ended in tragedy. Poseidon had told me that. I remembered the underworld. I thought about Gabe's spirit drifting forever in the fields of Asphodel or condemned to some hideous torture behind the barbed wire of the fields of punishment, an eternal poker game, sitting up to his waist in boiling oil, listening to opera music. Did I have the right to send someone there? Even Gabe? A month ago, I wouldn't have hesitated. Now, I can't do it, I told my mom. One look inside this box and he'll never bother you again. She glanced at the package and seemed to understand immediately. No, Percy, she said, stepping away. You can't. Poseidon called you a queen, I told her. He said he hadn't met a woman like you in a thousand years. Her cheeks flushed. Percy. You deserve better than this, Mom. You should go to college. Get your degree. You can write your novel. Meet a nice guy, maybe. Live in a nice house. You, need, you don't need to protect me anymore by staying with Gabe. Let me get rid of him. She wiped off a tear, a, a tear off her cheek. You sound so much like your father, she said. He offered to stop the tide for me once. He offered to build me a palace at the bottom of the sea. He thought he could solve all my problems with a wave of his hand. What's wrong with that? Her multicolored eyes seemed to search inside me. I think you know, Percy. I think you're enough like me to understand. If my life is going to mean anything, I have to live it myself. I can't let a God take care of me or my son. I have to find the courage on my own. Your quest has reminded me of that. We listened to the sound of poker chips and swearing, ESPN from the living room television. I'll leave the box, I said. If he threatens you, she looked pale, but she nodded. Where will you go, Percy? Half-Blood Hill? For the summer or forever? I guess that depends. We locked eyes and I sensed that we had an agreement. We would see how things stood at the end of the summer. She kissed my forehead. You'll be a hero, Percy. You'll be the greatest of all. I took one last look around my bedroom. I had a feeling I'd never see it again. Then I walked with my mother to the front door. Leaving so soon, punk? Gabe called after me. Good riddance. I had one last twinge of doubt. How could I turn down the perfect chance to take revenge on him? I was leaving here without saving my mother. Hey, Sally, he yelled. What about that meatloaf, huh? A steely look of anger flared in my mother's eyes, and I thought, just maybe I was leaving her in good hands after all, her own. The meatloaf is coming right up, dear, she told Gabe. Meatloaf surprise. She looked at me and winked. The last thing I saw as the door swung closed was my mother staring at Gabe as if she were contemplating it, how he would look as a garden statue. And here's where we'll stop to 